Well, good afternoon. I'm Aaron here with Bowtie Treasures. And I like to say I'm, I'm here in the Bowtie Treasures studio. I've been meaning to get live on YouTube for a couple weeks now, but I've been having some technical difficulties trying to get live here. So I'm just going to go straight into YouTube today because many of you may have gotten emails and notifications that I've been live before and it just hasn't worked out. So tonight, or actually this afternoon, it's just you here in YouTube land. So, uh, let me know you're watching. I'd love to see your comments. And if you're watching on re replay, let me know as well. I wanted to continue this project that I started on Facebook the other day. And if you're not following me on Facebook, it's just Bowtie Treasures. And you can see the first part of this project that I worked on. And But I still have a good bit of work to do. So I thought I'd bring you along in the journey. And hopefully everything's sounding and looking great. And we're just going to go ahead and, and jump right into it. Because, uh, like I said, there's a lot to do. Um, I'm just going to see if I can push a button here. All right. So first thing I wanted to let you know is that this antique wash stand has been top coated with, I say top coated, it's been bossed or primed with Dixie Bell's um, Boss, which is a new product. It's called Bonding Boss. And it was a gray color. And I put two coats of Dixie Bell's Rebel Yellow on there. On the inside, I used a color called Weeping Willow, and I also did some light sanding distressing on that. All of this will get a, a satin top coat later on when I'm done. The original hardware is stunning. It looks really good. I'm going to put that at the top. And then I have a couple wood knobs that I need to put right there, and they, those need the same technique. So I wanted to show you, let me just show you where we're headed. This is the part that I did the other day on Facebook and I want the rest of it to have the same appearance. So we're gonna jump on that for sure. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. If we have time, I'd like to put a little bit of detail on the side of the drawers and I've painted those as well. And I'm gonna be using the Weeping Willow through a silk screen stencil. We're not on the clock, but if uh, time allows, I'd like to showcase that as well. So let's not waste too much time. Like I said, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'll keep an eye on anybody that's tuning in later. And this work, if this works, we may do more of these lives in the near future. And I'm going to bring in a little closer. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I'm going to use is a misting bottle. This technique works well when the surface um, has a little of a, a bit of misting. This paint is thoroughly dry. It was painted a couple days ago. Um, but Voodoo Gel Stain is just one of many products you can use in, for this. And it just gives you a, a nice soft finish. And I'm also going to be using Dixie Bell's, it's called Dixie Dirt. There we go. There's three different uh, types. They have ash and also charcoal. And you can see the three different tones um, by looking at the bottom of the container. And I just like using the earth version because it has a nice uh, earthy tone. And I like to use it, I'm gonna use it mainly at the bottom just to give this an overall kind of worn. It's, it's been sitting in a kitchen for a hundred years and I think that would be a little bit more authentic. We don't need to use chalk paint right now, so I'll set that to the side, but I'm gonna go ahead and shake up my container. And we will pour some in there just so that we can use it throughout the live. The other thing I have on hand is a rag that I've wrung all the water out. I've got a couple of these laying around. Well, let me show you the top. This went to an old buffet and I trimmed down the side and moved this decorative element down. And I also did the same technique to this one already. And this will sit across the top and it's a nice added piece. And I'll sh try and show that in the finished products later on. So let me just go ahead and get this misted and we'll jump right into it. Uh, this is a nice size piece, so you don't need to, usually work in small spaces is a good idea. And so I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's, one of their one inch artist brushes to just um, rough in some of that brown. I want the brown Voodoo Gel Stain, this is Tobacco Road, to get all in the crevices and you can be a little messy with this because we're going to wipe some of it off. And also, I'm going to use a Dixie Bell Bell brush to kind of feather it and soften it out. And remember, I missed it ahead of time. So everything, I'm, I'm all the stuff I'm putting on right now 
is on a misted wet surface. And I'm working quickly because you don't want this to dry. And in just a moment, I'll probably give it a, a, another mist. So that's, this is about the most you'll want to do at one setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and mist again. And this is the bell brush I was telling you about. I tell you what, let's go ahead and just wipe off a little bit of the excess. We don't need all of that. And then we'll use the bell brush to soften that all up. Use your wet rag as an eraser. What I'm trying to accomplish this with this is a almost a blended soft vignette. But it also might feel, if you've seen enough chalk paint projects, it might look like uh, I may have waxed it with a brown wax, but it's actually voodoo gel stain. Other products you could try for the same technique would be um, Van Dyke Glaze. Glaze is more of a kind of a stickier consistency, but it works well too. You can see I'm wiping off again, a little bit more excess. Really just want that in the crevices for the most part. And I'm just doing one more last soft because this is gonna to start to set and I want to make sure that it's very soft and vignetted. Take a look over there. And you just put as much on here to taste really is the goal. But when you're done with this soft brush, there are other brushes you can do the same technique on. It'll, it'll look great. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to come in now with the Dixie Dirt. This is again optional. I'm gonna grab a different brush, but, and it's a powder. Can you see that? I'm not sure if it's focusing very well. I'm just gonna tap it into the top and just tap into where you want that. We, we're really creating a faux finish. So I'm where you want it to look like it's dirty or worn. You just put where you think it's going to be. And I'm going to mainly only keep this towards the bottom because that's think that's where most dirt would be anyway. And we'll go ahead and I'm using my wet rag, wipe off any excess paint, but you can switch it to a different rag. You see, I'm also feathering that in. And when I get done with this little part, I'll bring the camera in and you can move that around as aggressively or as gently as you'd like again until you just you're satisfied with the look i don't want any brush strokes because dirt doesn't go on with brush strokes all right hopefully the camera will let me do this but i'll just give you a quick show so that's that's what we're doing and you can do it at the top as well if you'd like but i'm choosing just to do the feet. And again, if we go back to the one I did the other day, you can see uh, I recommended on my previous video that do a side, let it dry and make sure you're happy with it before you do the whole piece because it may dry darker than you want. And you can see the Dixie dirt look pretty good down there as well. So you can see this would be just two coats of paint with no extra technique or you can add a little bit more. Um, technique and style to it if you want. All right, so now we're going to go to the front. The top, I'm leaving like I got it at an estate sale. Um, it was in an old garage, so it definitely wasn't uh, uh, being put in great use, but we're gonna make it look lovely. Somebody else might enjoy. All right, let me just adjust the camera again one more time. All right, so let's, I don't want to do this whole area. It's a little too large. So maybe pick some sections that you think would work well first. Uh, maybe let's work across the top and work our way down. So as we mist, when you do mist, make sure you're not misting over previous work because it could leave some spots. So we'll just work across the top, okay? And work our way down. We're going to repeat the same techniques as before. We're going to dip into our voodoo gel stain. Definitely want to get the drawers closed so I can put this medium um, into the cracks and crevices and spaces. If you notice, 
that you missed a spot misting, now's the time to add that, not after you've already started softening and blending it. You might consider, um, obviously, anywhere there's going to be lower uh, recessed areas or something that can keep the voodoo gel stain. So, for example, like all of these grooves would be good. But again, it's up to you and your piece. You could do this with chalk paint as well. Maybe water it down a little bit. I mentioned glaze already. And we'll put a little bit around the hardware, okay? Just so that hardware really pops. Like I did a while ago, I'll go ahead and wipe off a little bit of the excess. Don't want too much. And then we'll go back to our bell brush. And just focusing on this top drawer area. Now, it's going to get a little tricky because I said a while ago that the misting bottle can leave spots. So um, you might want to go ahead and mist your next area a little bit. Um, but just keep an eye on it. Sometimes you can block a section with your hand. Or One of the things I also did on the original side was I used light sandpaper and just, just give it a little light distressing, not a lot because I think that would be natural occurrence on something this old too. Remember the goal here is to make something, an antique piece after you've painted it, still look antique. All right, so let's just work down this side. Then we're moving pretty quick. You don't have to move this fast, but I would say if you are applying the glaze, you wanna have a good, pretty good pace, faster than the drying time, how about that? And just, again, we might go down this section here. The way this is built, there's a lot of wood, touching wood, and things are going to get scratched and scraped. And um, I'm totally embracing that, so I don't mind if there's some scratched paint because it'll just go to the, the look of the antiquing part. Again, I haven't been live on YouTube before. I've been trying for the last couple of weeks with my normal software and it just hasn't worked out. So I thought today I'm just gonna go live right into Facebook or YouTube. Back to the bell brush. Bring on a little bit. And just working in sections right now. Got another rag I'm gonna try and use. After a while, they start it starts getting too much medium in there, and you need a maybe a fresh rag, so keep a couple handy. And I'm I'm using this almost like an eraser, and then the brush or the uh, yeah the the brush is almost like a softening. Sometimes I use the word vignette, but. Even going, getting my brush into those grooves a little bit because I want it to be consistent and soft. Just erase some of that. Okay, we're, we're working our way top down. I'll do the bottom all at one time. So let's, um, I'm kind of using my hand to block off areas I don't want to get water on. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. Not 100% sure how that's going to behave after I'm done going live, but I probably will take this video too and process it and put it in the regular library, but we'll see. Going to go around the hardware, the knob. This knob is actually attached on the other side to kind of a locking mechanism, so it's kind of cool. We'll put a little dirt around the Hinges, a little bit down there. All right, so you kind of see how I'm doing that. We'll do our first round of removal, but let me go ahead and start softening some of those things. Dick Bell's product, chalk mineral paint. 
has a nice um, meet up canvas, if you will, for doing this kind of thing, just because it's smooth. So when I mist the water bottle, the mist stays on there a decent amount of time. Don't aim for, 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 uh, for perfection here. Don't aim for, for perfection. I don't know why that's hard to say. Wow. It's the peas, I'm sure. After, after a little bit of time, you won't be able to run a wet rag on it and remove anything, but so, but plenty of time to get the look we want though. Okay, so Dixie dirt wise, let's do that last. So I'm gonna mist and do the very bottom and then we'll bring come back with some Dixie dirt. One of the other reasons I switched rags is because the one I was using was a little older and was leaving fibers, too many little fibers. So if you might, depending on your finish, consider something that's a little less, maybe lint free, I guess would be the word. This is the fun part, getting to be a little messy. We'll mist one more time, put a lot of medium down, and then we'll wipe off a little bit of the excess. And the reason why there's a lot of excess is because I'm really wanting to get that voodoo gel stain in the cracks. Okay, now we can, you'll see me doing this a lot where I'm wiping off the brush just to get the ex excess off. If you'd like to see the first part of this video, it is, should be on my Bowtie Treasures Facebook page if you're not subscribing there. Okay, a little wiping off. I'd like to bring the attention, kind of highlight the area in the middle. All right, back to Dixie Dirt now. So let's work on this, the ends. I think that's where I would put it, around the feet, maybe towards the sides where it gets kicked a lot. Put some over here. Just anywhere you think dust is likely to gather. You might even just do some on the hinges. That'd be kind of nice. Not, not putting a lot of powder here, just a little bit of dirt. Might even think about around the handle a little bit. Just because these are places that don't get cleaned very well because it's got a raised surface. So you might think about that. And then soften any of that up so it's not, there's no brush strokes and it looks a little bit more natural. You can keep adding more of this dirt. I mean, you really go to town with it, but I'm trying to be a little bit more subtle with it. I keep finding little hairs on there, probably coming from my rag. All right, let's do this one last section over here. I could tell from the construction and things like this, that this piece has been repaired a little bit over time. So I'm embracing that a little bit by adding this antiquing for sure. The Voodoo gel stain is only going to do so much to adding dirt. That's why the Dixie dirt kind of gives it a little bit more of that authentic dirt feel. Voodoo gel stains not really accomplishing that too well. I'll put some more down in here. I can also use a rag to wipe off some of this dirt if you got too much. So just feel it out. All right. Good to see pop people popping in and out this afternoon. I'm in Pensacola, Florida, in case you don't know that. It's a warm day here. It's been kind of cloudy and rainy for a little while. Well, that looks so much better than just plain white. I think my camera's making it a little extra yellow. When I get this thing all staged in my staging area, I'll share those pictures with you. and You can get a really good idea of how it turned out. Sometimes the lights catch it differently, but looking 
very antique now. But I like the yellow color. It keeps it uh, fresh and fun, but also adding the age makes it keep it a little bit more authentic. I mentioned I was going to share with you the top. Let me just raise this camera up. Figure out my tripod here real quick. All right, so like I said, this sits back here. And I'll screw that on. And that wasn't part of the original piece, but I think that adds a little bit of extra class and especially goes nicely with the original hardware. I still need to do the hardware. Um, maybe let's do that real quick. How about that? As far as my lives here, I'm not really, uh, I'm normally live on Facebook every Tuesday night at 5.30. I am really going to try and connect these two accounts, but I just got to figure out the best way of doing that. So far, it's been kind of a struggle, kind of weird, because I like technology, so... All right, so I just put some Voodoo gel stain around these wood knobs and uh, maybe I'll just kind of pat it down to take some of that off and then we'll just... Don't, don't be afraid to get the medium all over because you can always wipe it off. So now it's kind of brown. We can just kind of, not kind of, we can just use our rag to kind of to wipe off some of that excess, maybe even on the sides a little bit. We just don't want that to look like it's only been painted. We want it to look authentic. All right. I just don't want any brush strokes. That's what my goal is right now. All right, those are good to go. There's one more technique that I wanted to feature for you today. So let me get this area ready for that. And that is using Dixie Bell's silk screen stencils. On my live on Tuesday, one of my follower suggested that I paint the sides and put a stencil on it. So that's what we're going to do today. Tell you what, let's do the top drawer. I still have not, by the way, um, let me just show you because I mentioned I was going to do that. I just need to find a piece of sandpaper. So this is 220 grit sandpaper. And if you want to slightly distress this, just, just a light touch, nothing, nothing too crazy. You can also do this after you top coat. If you're worried about any of your, of your project bleeding, bleeding is when the tannins of the wood come through and they start yellowing. Um, so I'm kind of taking a little risk, but I'm just demonstrating that little bit shouldn't be too much of a problem, but if we're doing heavy distressing, I'd probably wait till after I top coat. But the nice thing about this technique is that it does bring out some of the original wood. It also brings out the grayish tone of boss that I put on here, which is like the top coat. And it gives it a little bit of that authentic look. Just little touches here and there. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. Um, and you can always just do this to taste. I already did it on corners and things like that. So just wherever you feel you want to do some of that, maybe on hit some of the edges of the knobs. Let me see if it wants to show. Just get a little bit of authenticity. You can even do this before you do the glaze or any other medium because it's going to want to take it back to original paint. And so I'm actually putting some of that glaze back on there. And I think that'll work really well. All right. 
let's pull this drawer out. You can see I got a little bit of glaze on the sides, and that's actually okay. I can, it's not too late that I can't wipe off some of that. Okay. So here's the side, figure out the best way of showing you all this. I think what I'm gonna do is set it right here. And then bring you guys back down a little bit. This is the silk screen I was telling you about. This is Dixie Bell's mosaic. And it comes with, you can always look on the back of the packages. You can see the, the set, the three sheets that comes in. So there's quite a bit of variety to work with. I think what I'd like to do, what catches my eye the most is this corner piece I think would be really great. This is the hole. So I, I want it to be almost something, there we go, like that. So when they pull it out, there's a little bit of a surprise there. And I think that works well. There's a lot of options. We could do the square, maybe repeat it. Um, the other one that I considered was putting this on there because I thought that really went well, kind of well with the hardware. I don't know. I just, something about that caught my eye. So maybe I can do both, one for the larger squares and ones for this one. But for now, let's try this one. It has a backing on it. I just need to peel that off because you want to keep this back. This is what you're going to put kind of back to back again. After you clean this, I just clean it with soapy water and a sponge. It's sticky on the back. You get a few uses out of this. After time, it's going to just lose its stickiness. Hey, well, let's put it right there. So the nice thing, it is sticky. And that's where we want to go. Now, the package comes with a card. I'm looking for it. So it allows you to scrape paint in there. The other option is to get one of Dixie Bell's, it's called a thingamajig. And it's, an, it's almost like a, it's a rubber squeegee. So it allows you to put paint in there as well. Let me, since I didn't get my paint ready, let me get that out. You do not have to use a squeegee, by the way. You can use a brush, anything to help get you to get the paint in there, but I'm gonna use the thingamajig. And all you, I'm going to do is dip my, my thingamajig into the paint. Now, the other thing you might could do is also tape this on if you feel like it just isn't sticking. But this isn't going to go very long, take very long, so I should be okay just to hold it. it again, it is sticky, but this side over here wants to keep flopping around. So you're going to get a really clean finish. And I'm also going to slightly distress this, but let's put that on there. See how little paint I have? You're just scraping the paint in there. This is not like a Mylar stencil, which is a thicker plastic. This would be what you would see people, silk screen. Basically the idea is like silk screening clothes or if you've ever seen silk screen. Um, I've done some lives where I've done this on clothing and it's a fun result too. So keep in mind that these silk screen stencils are reusable. Granted, you clean it out pretty quick. Oftentimes what I'll do is I will put the stencil in a bucket of water like during a live if I can't go clean it out right away. You may not get all the paint off the stencil, but you want to keep that screen mesh area pretty clear because that's the part that's doing the work. So I'm just doing a light scrape right there. And that's it. Just make sure you got paint all the way in there. And like I said, you can use a brush. And there we go. And I think that's gonna look beautiful. And then we'll just let that dry and I will come back and do a light sanding on that just so that it looks a little bit more authentic. I just gotta get my bearing straight on this again. I want the bottom corner here. And I think that's good. And we'll do the same thing. 
If for some reason you don't get it where you want, it wouldn't be so hard to do a light sanding and just repaint the surface. So, But if you've never done this before, by all means, give it a good practice on maybe some cardboard or construction paper or something that you just can get a good hang of how much paint and pressure to put on it. To me, the key is slow and steady. Don't get a lot of paint. Do a little section at a time. And I'm not going over back too much with paint over the sections I've already done. Now that I've already used the stencil one, it's getting a little harder to tell where I have paint and where I don't, but just try to look for a consistent color. Because once you pull this off, you're probably not going to be able to really get this lined up perfectly. So just do a decent inspection. You might be able to, but I wouldn't stress over if you did. And there we go. Like I said, I'll, I'll just sand it slightly so it's not so clean. But I think that turned out really well. And, but I will, the stressing will get rid of that fresh clean. You could also run that voodoo gel stain on the side if you want to taint, tint the so sides also. But if you remember, let me show you. I've got to, like I said, see if I can open the front of this. It's got a little, like I said, it's got a little locking thing. There we go. It's got a little locking mechanism that they built into it. I just did a light sanding on the inside, so it's distressed, and I'll do the same thing with the drawers. But I'm using the same color with the stencil right now, so I think it really helps tie it all together. Let me pull out, I just look, threw my thing the jig across the room. All right. Now, the sides did not get two coats, so they're a little transparent right now, but I think that's okay, considering this is an antique piece. All right, what did I do? Let me go grab that thing with Jig. It fell on the floor across the room. It's so bouncy. Here we go. I'm gonna wipe it off just a little bit, and we'll do the same kind of corner technique again. If you work in a somewhat methodical way, you should be able to know where you have. I can see a little bit of where I'm at. When I do the other side, I'm gonna, I'll bring the camera in close for you about that. So you can really see what my eyes are seeing, hopefully. I feel like I'm getting to that point in my, my, my age where I gotta start doing something to see it close. Distances, oh, look at that. I got a little goober of paint on the back. You see it on my stencil right there. That's the problem with using this over and over again for multiple sides, is you can start getting that idea, but we'll just use a wet rag and... There we go, because I really don't want to put a coat of paint on that because I like how thin it is right now. All right, one more side on this drawer. As promised, let me bring you in closer. I got to drop my tripod just so I can get you guys in here. So give me a second, we're going to go down. Bring you in close. All right. Keeping these things at the bottom. Oh, I was putting the sticky side in the wrong place. You do not want sticky side out. You want sticky side up against your project. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of a light wipe off on this. Not too much. Okay, back to our thingamajig. And let's work top down. I do not have a lot of paint on here, but you're really trying to scrape it into the voids. 
I would not do this technique with the mylar stencils, but this is how I would definitely do it with the silk screen. There is a card that comes with the product, so you don't have to use a thingamajig, but it's really nice. I like that there's different shapes. I've used this thingamajig uh, for other things that I've done with projects, so it's a nice tool to have. I'm just going to scrape a little bit of the excess off. Light pressure, though. And really clean and crisp, beautiful. All right, we're going to do one more drawer. We will call it a day. If I can get the drawer out. There we go. Kind of tight quarters right now. So this is, again, kind of what happens when you... I'm, it's already probably starting to dry, but just get a little bit of that excess. Gel stain off. Okay. Keeping this towards the bottom. So this is the, what... the. Fifth time, one, two, three, four, fifth time to use this. Now, when I say you get multiple uses, I'm talking about after cleaning it. So the cleaning is going to start taking off some of the sticky, but I think of all the stencils I've done, I still have, and I've used some of them many, many times, they're still sticky. So I think they were originally saying 10 times, but you're going to do pretty good if you've used something more than 10 times. You must really love that stencil. And if you use it 10 times, you probably are going to be okay with buying a new one because you love it so much. <laughs> Isn't that how it works, right? I'm starting to lose track of where I've put paint, so I'm really trusting myself here. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, I'm starting to... And that's okay. Like I said, I'm going to distress this. So even if I've missed some areas, that's going to play right in along with my plan. So, all right, last one. Been very impressed that oh, you see a little bit of extra new gel stain right there. All right. No scientific. Exact location needed. Working top down. There's so many. I love that the silk screen sets come with so many pieces to the set, like three sheets with all kinds of goodies on it. So there's a lot of diversity to the set, which I really like. I think that was the fastest stencil I did. Missed it a little bit right there, but that's okay. All right, so got to get that thing all dried up or cleaned up. Okay, well, I hope that went well. My first live on YouTube. I'll try and be back. Uh, here in the near future. I'm going to try and sync it up to Facebook. We'll see. But if uh, you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. And uh, hopefully you, you learned a couple things about how to make something a little bit more antique and adding some silk screen stencil to your project. All right. Until next time, I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Y'all have a great week. And thanks for watching, friends. We'll see you later.